Good morning. I'm Vince Lancey, and today's market rundown, we're going to talk about UBS. They have a nice report out in gold. We're going to accept that for you. And we're going to talk about swimming pools, tourists, and gold, if you can believe that. So let's get going. Okay. First off, well, let's look at the markets first, right? Uh, let's see. What do we have here? I'll let you look at the gold chart there while we're doing that. The dollar is down four at 102.88. Bond yields are up slightly at 416.6. The S&P 500 is 51.80 spot seven. The VIX is 13.82. Got slammed yesterday. Gold 21.62 up $5. Silver 24.30 hanging in there. Up 19 cents. That's good. Uh, copper is up over a percent at 397.30. Bitcoin is up again, overcoming yet another slam. I said we would talk about that today, but I just want to just leave this with you because I have to I have to flush it out a little bit more. Bitcoin is being spoofed lower to be accumulated by whales. And it's the same thing they used to do with silver and gold. Unfortunately, they're buying it when it dips, but they're making it dip. Anyway, we'll come back to that another time. Platinum and palladium are both up. Palladium 1066 up over 2%, and platinum 933, up 1.45%. I don't know why palladium goes up. It's useless except for one thing. All right, crumbly, ugly metal. Oil is 78.73, up 60 cents. That will probably continue to happen, and natural gas is down 2% at 165. Okay, where are we? Uh, oh, yeah. Here we are. There's the homepage. We put out a, a lot of re reports yesterday. Uh, and there's the CPI report that came in hot yesterday. And we kind of broke it down for people to understand. There's the weekly, which is very popular. And we're also throwing out mainstream media uh, headline news. Uh, anyway, moving on. The first thing we're going to talk about is uh, a UBS report that I gave you a little bit of a heads up on yesterday. That was out March 11th. And we, you know, we have access to it. The UBS CIO commented on gold, which is significant. Now, UBS is not a bullion bank per se, but they represent big money in Switzerland and they do have a lot of gold interest. I mean, it's Switzerland, right? Uh, all right, so here we go. Here's an excerpt from, from the CIO, Chief Investment Officer. While we see potential for a pullback in gold in the near term, this does not mean the rally can't go further over the coming year. We see gold being supported by several trends, and they go into the trends. Anyway, that continues in premium. The bottom line on that report is, uh, uh, just to give you a quick summary, is uh, the trends remain in place for gold to be constructive. Nobody knows why it's rallying right now, uh, but they don't expect the, the pullback to be big, and everyone looks like they're going to be buying a dip. That's something that's out there. Everyone's saying that, not coincidentally. Okay, so everyone out of the pool. Yesterday's activity, uh, well, we should take a big pause, right? So yesterday was $20 lower. Uh, what does that mean? All right, I'm going to try and give you some framework to understand what that means. And to do that, I'm going to use a chart, this chart, by... Uh, created by Goldfix founder, uh, something that we look at. This chart, the gold or yellow line, that's the price action of the market. And the lower part of it is just pay attention to the red line for this. The red line is the open interest. You can ignore the green lines for now. So what you see there is you see on the top, you see the market. And on the bottom, you see the COMEX open interest, not the GLOBE's op open interest. And it's pricing GLD on the right quadrant, on the right uh, axis, but you know this is this is gold basically. Now in the second one, we've identified a trend, and that trend is basically a correlation. And the red arrows show you that how gold normally acts. When gold goes up, open interest goes up. When gold goes down, open interest goes down. Now why is that? Because gold is an investor market. Investors who put money into the market, or traders, let's call them traders. Let's call most of them what they are traders put money into the market, 
the market goes up. Traders take money out of the market, the market goes down. So it is direction is largely driven by investment slash speculative price, which means it's relatively short term based. These people are not taking delivery of the metal. These people are interested in uh, making money day to day, week to week, maybe month to month at most. That's normal gold. Market goes up, open interest goes up. Market goes down, open interest goes down. Now, something changed, and Goldfix subscribers uh, learned about it early. The mainstream media is still telling you they don't get it uh, because that's their job. Something changed, and what changed started in, oh, well, it started after October, but it wasn't in October itself. What changed was the market remained wide and violent, but still in a, in a range for a time period up until, say, February 28th. And the open interest dove. So if the open interest has to go down when the market is going down and people are selling, that's why they're getting out. Why is the market not moving? Well, the market's not moving because the buying isn't United States based. The market's not moving because the buying isn't hot money based. The market's not moving because because hedge funds are buying it. The market's not moving because you know uh, uh, your parents are buying it. The market's moving because someone not in the U.S. is buying it. Why is it going up if no one's buying it here? That's a good question because they're not buying it there. They're buying it over the counter. They're buying in Shanghai. They're buying it in London. They're buying it in private transactions. And every time they buy it in those private transactions, the guys who sell it to them, they buy what they can on the COMEX and the market goes up. For this time period of this green arrow, I believe is the answer to why is gold going up? During this time frame, the market place was stable to higher while American and European, I would assume, investors uh, disinvested from the market, lost interest in it. So people were getting out of the pool, right? The water level wasn't going down. So what's going on? Well, somebody else is getting in the pool. And that somebody else is going to take delivery. And they've been taking delivery. And if you look at this, if you look at the uh, COMEX inventories, I don't have that chart handy. You'll see what I'm talking about. Anyway, this is a stealth takeover of uh, American precious metals. That's what this is. This is a takeover. Okay, so the pool analogy, we're going to stay with that. So something changed again on March 1st, roughly. And the market started to ramp with funds buying. Now, what is that? That's the red arrow resuming itself. And the red arrow is everybody in the pool. Right? But these are tourists, right? Red Arrow people are tourists. They're not fundamentalist. They're not sound moneyist. They're just looking to make money because market go up. And so what do they do? They drive the market up because they're sloppy. They're irresponsible. They're not patient like the Green Arrow people are. And they distort the market higher. Everyone is in the pool. Okay? It's 4th of July, high tourist season. All right? Now you've got a market that is very well bought, seemingly far away from where that fundamental green arrow buying is. And now you've got all these tourists going, well, we're here. What do we do now? Well, what do they do? After a while, they play around in the water a little bit and they get out of the pool because that's what they do. They get distracted. Oh, look, NVIDIA is moving. Let's take our money out of gold and put it in video. And that's how it works. So people are getting out of the pool now. These are tourists. We want them to get out of the pool. They need to get out of the pool. How do we handle that? How do we take that? How do we look at that going forward? How do we use that as a tool to give us an idea, to give us some comfort when the market drops $50? Because it can drop $50 in a heartbeat. Here's how. The market... If it drops again, if the yellow line drops to where I put that green arrow, 
and the open interest drops to where I put that green arrow, then this market is in really, really good shape. Meaning, call this froth. Now, there's more froth than I'm saying, but call this froth. This is the tourist trade, okay? These are the tourists coming into your town, right? Fourth of July, driving up the price of beer, you know, emptying out the grocery store, and then they leave. And when they leave, when you're in this range again, in this area here, you're kind of in a normal environment. When these knuckleheads get out of the market because they're impatient, because they're distracted by something else, if this market is above this line, you're going to have a big rally because that means that the tourists got out right down here and the prices remained elevated. And that means the buyer that was here before is now here. And that's it. Let's look at the charts. Okay, so here's your daily for goal. I'm gonna give you a level, right? I've, I've refined some of my levels here. I drew this level, right? I put a high there. I figured that's a breakout area, right? And uh, I had this one here. This one I was very intimate with. And this channel here, I'm not calling it a channel. I'm marking it as where the buyer was. Now, what I think is, I think this is probably a more important level than even I know. And I'm trying to figure out why. And I think after a move like this, People who missed the rally are going to buy the dip and they're probably going to buy the dip on like a Fibonacci type of thing, right? So I'll put a little Fibonacci thing here. All right, so there you, oh, it's actually a really good number. All right, let me get rid of this. I'm going to remove this for a second so you guys can see it. And I'll move my... Level. Look at that. 38% retracement, classic Fibonacci number. It was bought there the first time, okay? If you're bullish and we're above that line, you're comfortable. I personally don't think the second time down it'll be bought. Fibonacci levels uh, rarely work. Now, I'm not telling you to go out there and get short. I'm saying if it goes below here, don't be upset. It's the tourists getting out. All right. Let's do some news and we'll get going here. Market news. Consumers continue to contend with higher inflation in February. Yes. And that inflation will continue to uh, be persistent because now we're into driving season and driving season means higher gas prices. So while the price of your nail salon may drop, uh, the price of your gasoline will go up. Jamie Dimon, CEO of JP Morgan yesterday warned the bank should wait for additional, the Fed should wait for additional clarity before cutting. Of course, more banks go under. That's good for him. But, you know, he's actually right. Boeing's problems rippling across major U.S. airlines. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Boeing is having a lot of problems. I don't want to be conspiratorial about it, but it's a good way to get people to stop flying, right? If you're trying to slow the economy down. Uh, ultra processed foods may not only affect our bodies, but our brains too. There's an article out in the Wall Street Journal talking about how ultra processed foods are bad. They're talking us, I mean, that's all true, but they're talking us out of spending money. They're not saying save, okay? Uh, the ironic thing is once they've identified what healthy eating is, rediscovered it, you know, uh, low carbs, you know, the keto diets, concepts like that. Once they do it, they call it a syndrome. You know, they call it ultra processed food use disorder. You're eating crappy, right? I'm not blaming you for eating crappy. I eat crappy, right? But that's because they've been shoving in our faces for 30 years. All right. TikTok intends to exhaust all legal challenges before it considers any kind of divestiture from Chinese parent company ByteDance if the latest U.S. legislation targeting the app becomes law. It's too late. It's already a disease. Uh, I have a lot of experience with ByteDance. They had a product called Musical.ly. If you have a teenage daughter uh, or, or a preteen daughter, there was a product called Musical.ly and it was actually looked very harmless, but it was not harmless. And ByteDance took the Musical.ly algorithm and made it into the TikTok algorithm. So uh, I don't have TikTok. I'll watch it on Twitter, which is becoming like TikTok. But anyway, here we go. Geopolitics. CIA Director Byrne said there is still a possibility of a Gaza ceasefire. Move on. U.S. may urge partners and allies to fund a privately run operation to send aid to, by sea to Gaza. Okay. Uh, U.S. Central Command announced that Houthis fired a close-range ballistic missile. 
Continuing, Russia, President Putin said, if U.S. troops appear in Ukraine, Russia will treat them as interventionists and noted from military technical point of view, Russia is ready for nuclear war. So he's saying, hey, don't think I'm not seeing this, right? The second thing I think is actually, uh, we all know this already, but Putin said he does not trust anyone and Russia needs signed guarantees when asked about an honest treaty with the West, consistent with what he said before. Putin also stated that Russia will deploy troops and equipment to the Finnish border after Finland enters the NATO, even though it's it's really just ceremonial. Um, while he added that Sweden and Finland's entry into NATO is a meaningless step, according to RIA. All right, well, that's that's their press, right? It's the Cold War Iron Curtain. Ukrainian Army Chief, uh, can't say it, Sersiski, and Defense Minister Umarov held a phone call with U.S. Defense Secretary on Weapons Delivery. We need more guns. We need more bullets. Poland's PM Tusk. This, I think, might be interesting. Poland's PM Tusk said he talked about quickly unblocking U.S. funds for Ukraine with U.S. President Biden, and there was a confirmation that the U.S. will not hesitate to defend Poland if necessary. Those things seem like they're not related, but they're completely related geopolitically. If we don't help Ukraine, then Poland takes that as we're not going to help them if they get invaded. Right? Ukraine is on Poland's border, and so, you know, Poland doesn't have a great history with Ukraine, but, you know, they have a much worse history with Russia, as we know. Russia and Germany were not very kind to Poland. And there you have it. If, uh, you know, if we're going to let Ukraine fall, what about us? That's what Poland's thinking, right? And Japan's looking at Taiwan going, if you're going to let Taiwan fall, what about us? And that's how the geopolitical uh, rock rolls. I'm Vince. This has been the Market Rundown. Have a great day.